Book Review of Exposé of the Two Natures Teaching written by A. E. Nock. Having recently read this book, it profoundly transformed my perception of myself, my children, and everyone around me. The impact was so significant that I found myself returning to its pages at least five or six times, each reading deepening my understanding and altering my views further. It is a very important work that I highly recommend to everyone who is seeking truth. Understanding Human Nature and Sin Scripture mentions human nature but it's not inherently corrupt or utterly depraved as often taught. Man's corruption and depravity are due to his condition, not his nature. In Romans the Apostle Paul doesn't disparage human nature, instead he states that the nations instinctively do what the law requires, Romans 2.14. If humans had a fallen nature how could they naturally align with God's law? Nature versus Sinful Acts Human sin is not inherent in nature or flesh. To understand sin and sinner we see that sin means to miss the mark, and a sinner is wanting of, or lacks, God's glory, Romans 3.23. When humans didn't honor God he let them follow dishonorable passions against nature, Romans 1.26. Acts against nature prove that human nature itself is not sinful. Even amidst degrading behaviors, human nature remains uncontaminated. If human nature were truly sinful, these acts would align with it, yet they don't. Paul further asserts this in Romans 2.14-16 where he discusses the nation's relationship to the law. Even without the law they naturally do what the law demands, showing the law is written on their hearts. Nature aligns with conscience and God's law. Contrary to common belief, a fallen nature doesn't push us to sin. Instead, nature in some measure fulfills the role of God's law. The nations, though lawless, instinctively follow God's law. This nature is affirmed by conscience. The integrity of human nature. God's law aligns with human nature, not against it. If human nature were depraved, instinct would lead away from God's law, not towards it. Romans 2 14-16 shows nature and conscience together uphold God's law. The expression by nature children of wrath Ephesians 2 3 has been misunderstood. It refers to the Jews, showing sin comes naturally to both Jews and Gentiles. Understanding sin's impact. All have sinned by lacking God's glory. This lack, or want, attacks humanity's vitality. Sin didn't change human nature but weakened life's power. Adam began to die when he sinned, and his body's vitality diminished. Sin lowered his body's vitality, not its nature. When God withdraws his spirit, all flesh perishes, like it says in Job. Like fruit plucked from a tree, humanity's vitality ebbs away after being severed from God. Sin and human degradation. Thorns and thistles illustrate sin's true essence, showing stunted growth due to lack of vitality. Eden had no thorns nor will the coming eon. Sin like thorns causes degeneration and death. The gospel brings salvation supplying the missing divine glory. As stated in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and chapter 3 verse 23, man sins not because of nature but due to lost vital force. These truths highlight sin as a tyrant, not inherent in nature. The Law and Human Nature The law of Sinai failed because of human weakness, not nature. In the future humans of the same nature will fulfill the law with divine empowerment. The concept of a sinful nature is a theological misconception. Sin has devitalized humanity but hasn't transformed its nature. Jesus and human nature. Jesus was sinless because he had the Father's life, giving him power over sin. He shared our nature but had divine vitality. Sin drives humanity closer to God. Associating sin with a change in human nature is unscriptural. Sin entered through one act and doesn't change God's creation's nature. Sin leads to death, not a nature change. The same theology that deems nature sinful also wrongly proposes eternal life in misery. Sin is God's tool to show dependence on his power, turning creatures into friends and driving them to him. My experience in prison. A number of years ago I served as a volunteer chaplain in a local county prison, spending a significant amount of time with sex offenders. Most of them were acutely aware that their actions were wrong and despised what they had become. Yet many were also kind-hearted and friendly individuals. This paradox was challenging to reconcile. However, after reading this book, I gained a deeper understanding of their condition. It became clear that being a sex offender was not inherent to their nature. Rather, they were unable to control the compulsion to offend. Therapy and treatment, while rarely curative, sometimes helped them resist these urges. Many of them have endured childhood trauma and abuse having been victims themselves. 
their ability to resist and make good choices has been severely compromised. These men were, in a sense, experiencing a profound deficiency, a state of wanting or lacking, as described in Romans 7. Their struggle was extreme, and as we know, all of this falls under God's sovereignty and ultimately serves a greater purpose. To be clear, I firmly believe these men should be incarcerated to protect themselves, their victims, and society. Their confinement is necessary to prevent further harm and ensure the safety of all involved. It is crucial to acknowledge and validate the immense pain and long-term suffering endured by their victims. The trauma these victims experience is profound and lasting and it is essential that we do not downplay their hardships. However, this insight has given me a sense of compassion for them, recognizing that they are in a hopeless situation they neither sought nor can easily escape. And I'm grateful that they are part of God's ultimate plan for the reconciliation of all things. I know that God will make things right for both them and their victims. This book will change your life. Again, I highly recommend this book. If you are struggling with two natures teaching, it will open your eyes to the truth. You are not inherently evil. The process of dying has weakened your ability to fight temptation. We are looking forward to the day when we will be vivified and his power will operate full strength in us.